Welcome to the Quest for Treasure on the Quest for Details channel. Today we're working with some rhyolitic tuff. This is compressed volcanic ash. It's been made into a stone and then through weathering and water it's been banded, stained, developed banding. These are pieces of the stone that didn't have as much landscape patterning in it as the others but I still wanted to work with the material it's got really cool uh, dendritic growth and and the same pretty colors so we're gonna try and make some 3d objects out of it a pyramid maybe an obelisk and then um, do some surface line work carving with the dremel in it it's a pretty soft material and I think that it will work out pretty good it'll be strong enough to be able to hold the sharp lines and get pretty intricate with it so I'd say the hardness of the stone is about equal to cutting through a soft brick so you really don't have to struggle very much to get the blade through it and that ease of cutting allows you to be uh, creative so it's a good thing to practice with for sure just like carving soap before you would carve rock or or any softer thing that you can work on and again this is just a regular tile saw that I have um, set up with a little extra water flow than it would normally have instead of running it through a little pump I'm using a larger flow hose and this is the result we have the basic shapes these are going out in the yard they're pretty but they have fractures running through them and flaws that don't make it worth dealing with and now it's literally off to the drawing board just some indelible marker and went over it doing some basic line work this is what I call the two dragons so it's kind of a, a Celtic weave or just a basic line work I've been doing it most of my life so it comes natural and I've done all sorts of variations on on the line work itself and of course these are just basic knots so we're ready I'm gonna go ahead and take a Dremel with a diamond embedded tip on it and that's what we'll be using with a little bit of water to just go ahead and move through this Nice deep set on that. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with some like black, uh, maybe fingernail polish, some sort of strong acrylic. 
and I like to do them deep enough to where there'll still be a good lip on there afterwards. But yeah, you get the idea. On to those next. This was our warm up, pretty warm up. Yeah, you knock those corners off so it ends up being more of a long coffin shape or something. And yeah. Fun stuff. I'm getting the depth on that. That took a little while. And you're trying to keep your outer edges still sharp. Yeah, so there's about a good hour's worth of work sped up and put to some tunes for you. Use the two different bits on this one, one with a flat end on it that has the diamonds embedded in it so you can get the nice flat bottom and then a pointy tip so I could get the sharp edges into everything. The next part of this will be to take some black, I'm using nail polish in the beginning of this but I finish out using black paint and uh, take some some black acrylic and apply it to the bottom of this to give it even more depth. You could leave it natural. That actually looks pretty cool in itself. I decided to go with the, uh, the darker on these. The first one you can see is finished out. And yes, I'm using Olive's LA Girl Gel and she knows about it. She just said I had to replace it. You see there's a uh, nail polish on the surface and I'll just sand it off and it'll clean up like that and have its sharpness. Although now the black has dust, it will have to rinse out of there, but you get the idea. And still kept the depth. So here it is dried out some more and sanded a little bit. I actually go in between these even more and do touch ups with sanding. You can sharpen it up that way. And yeah, they need to get rinsed. The next will be the pyramid.
Okay, three dollars for a set of super fine little paint brushes. Now I'm using some acrylic paint. I'm going back over these that I uh I'm going back over these that I originally did with uh, Olive's nail polish. And if you go outside the lines a little bit, it is okay because we're still gonna sand the surface off after we're done cutting and, and doing the other things that we need to do to it to finish it out. The other thing that I did was I picked up some Krylon varnish. And now I'm going back over these that we've carved and uh, there'll be more cutting, finishing the drawings on these and um, I said everything. Nip the ends off on that one so it's more of a, a coffin shape. Um, sand it down, just gotta varnish it. Same thing with this one. Cut it more into its Star Trek Celtic insignia. And then this is the pyramid. And I took the two back corners off. It had a natural flaw on one side, so I just went ahead and balanced it out. And the colors in it, you'd see they weren't sharp landscapes. That's why we went ahead and started with using this for other things besides the landscaping. But yeah, I think that came out pretty, pretty uh, balanced. For just being hand done and a cool thing to do with those colors and then just a shiny finish and we could definitely put the flat or matte on there the shiny kind of gives it the illusion of being a uh, more agate like stone but yeah okay well Thank you for uh, watching this video to this point. If you have stayed all the way to the end, I truly appreciate it. And uh, please come back and join me on the next adventure. We're going to try and get back out there. I know we've been doing a lot of crafty stuff. Um, I had done a lot of this crafty stuff and then was out adventuring around. And I wanted to show you all what I was doing in the shop when I was home. So don't forget to appreciate the details.